in Australian conditions, particularly in the when you get towards the fringes of farming areas, it's important to have large discs and large press wheels. Many machines from overseas, they, are, they, they were designed in areas that have been farmed for many years and they don't need large discs. These, this, this machine was designed primarily for Australian conditions where you've got logs, you've got stumps, you've got all sorts of residue, trash. And because you've probably got a wide machine and you're going to be planting at night, you don't want to be worried about what's happening out wide. We've also got a large press wheel. 610 millimeters diameter, uh, it's pneumatic. When you get into sticky conditions, you can let the air down to 7, 10 PSI, and the walls on the, on the press wheels are eight ply, so logs will find it very difficult to penetrate and canola stubble won't, won't trouble. Apart from the large press wheels, which really suit Australian conditions, we've also got this floating cross arm. Each, each lot of press wheels, there's four press wheels on each module. One, two, three, four. You can see it there, it floats. And that's three spacings. So we've really only got a variation between three spacings. And, and as, they, as each module glides over the rocks, depending on how they go, they can they can rotate and slide to get you the best packing possible. We've got large discs which help to roll over rocks and stumps and logs, but also there will come a time when you're going to meet an immovable object and we need this to trip. We've got a two inch trip in here and the whole lot will trip against this spring. But the rest of the discs will still operate properly, they'll put the seed in the soil, whatever depth you're, you're planting at, and just the one that encounters the obstacle will trip. Many of the soils in Australia are hard setting, uh, and some are even compacted. Uh, to, a, to a larger or lesser extent, there's some compaction, particularly if you've got stock. A traditional problem with disc seeders is the inability or the partial inability of the machine to close the slot properly. In hard setting soils or in compacted soils, the soil can break away in chips and you've got nothing left or very little left to cover the seed. In response to farmers' demands to ensure a properly closed slot and good soil to seed contact, we've developed the muffler wheel. The muffler wheel basically rides along the side of the disc. As the soil comes off, it crunches it back down into the trench. They're quite easy to adjust. We've got a little tool here which we slip over the top. We've got a pin here which we can put in a number of positions. Pull the pin. Now you can vary the downward pressure, the operating pressure, or you can take them right out of the picture if you want, store them up. You simply select the position you want them, put the pin back in, and you're done. In sticky soils, you can get build-up on the opposite side of the disc to the boot. Some of that build-up can be quite substantial. In fact, it can give the disc wheel characteristics, so you've got a big wheel riding on top of the ground and it won't penetrate. In that case, you'll need to scrape the other side of the disc, and for that we've got a, a scraper similar to the boot scraper. It's available in kit form and can be retrofitted to the machine. We just mount the uh, carrier bar across there and we drop these down over the disc. This pivots so that it can cling to the disc and it's spring-loaded against the side of the disc. And if you look at how it's sitting loose there, when you tighten up the spring, it just clings to the disc. And depending on how sticky the soils are, you can adjust the tension on the spring. Nice bit of tension there on the, against the disc. 
you can see that nothing's going to get through there. That'll keep that disc clean and it'll make sure that the disc penetrates to the constant depth, whatever depth we want. It's very important to keep the press wheels clean. In some sticky soils, the press wheels can build up perhaps one or two inches and you effectively change your planting depth. To do that, we've got a press wheel scraper, which has got a tungsten tip on it, tungsten tiles. It's very important to keep the press wheels clean. And they're also available in kit form and can be retrofitted. Also very important to keep the levelling wheels constant. We don't want a build up of soil. In sticky soils they can build up, so we, one of the options we've got is uh, the levelling wheels scraper, which has also got tungsten tiles on it. Also available in kit form and no problem to retrofit. There are two ways of applying nitrogen. The first and the simplest one is a tube where the nitrogen is applied in the form of urea between the discs. This is useful basically in sandy conditions. Sprayed between the discs and incorporated in the moving soil. The other method, and much more expensive and complicated, is to fit nitrogen applicators to the front, basically another row of planting discs. The depth is independently adjustable from the seed rows. These banders can also be used in row uh, to obtain deep cultivation to combat plant diseases such as Rhizoctonia. For years we've been striving to obtain low disturbance. Now that we've obtained low disturbance, there are some areas in Australia, for instance with infestations of ryegrass, one of the simplest and most effective treatment methods is a pre-emergence herbicide. Uh, for those to be effective, you've got to have a slight covering of the herbicide with the soil. So these chemical covers in the form of star discs are attached out the back. They're adjustable both the height and the downward pressure. They're available in kit form and can be retrofitted. We also manufacture air kits to suit all machines, all air seeders and all cultivator bars. When we fit them, we've got our own particular setup. They're available in kit form, can be retrofitted. It is advisable to get the air kit when, we're, when you're purchasing the machine off us because we do fit them free. But of course there are going to be parts that it's, it's not convenient to ship, such as the connection to the air sealer. That will have to be fitted by the customer or the dealer. Diffusers, not normally required, particularly when we fit the air kit, but they can be useful, particularly if you've got a backpacker operating the machine at night and you want to blow the air out strong so that there's no risk of a blockage and then you want to dissipate the air before it hits the ground, otherwise you'll get seed blast all over the place. If they're ordered with the machine, we fit them before it goes out. If not, they are retrofitable, available in kit form. Tram tracking. Very common in the eastern states, and I see it sneaking in in the other states now as well. There's many options for tram tracking. The most common is, is three meters. In fact, the, our most common machine is a three meter tram track 40 foot wide on 12 inch spacing. Talk to us about your tram tracking requirements and we can certainly design the machine for you.